These days in Australia and other Western countries, isn't it a given that we make our own choices about our sexuality? Not only that, but whatever those choices, isn't it guaranteed they'll be respected and supported? Well, as you're about to see, no. Some fundamentalist churches still actively preach homosexuality is a sin, and they think a bizarre mix of prayer and threat is the way to fix it. Gay conversion therapy, as it's called, continues to be practised on mainly young Australians who've been deemed broken by church ministers and counsellors. But shamefully, far from doing God's work, these people are causing lifelong damage. We're filming undercover, inside a counselling group where they're told it's a sin to be gay. What you're about to hear is confronting. It's the world saying, oh, it's OK, you were actually born that way, Robert. But that's not what God says. God says there's something that has come to corrupt that. Tonight, we expose the unregulated world of religious counselling. The Bible actually says that this is wrong. Designed to switch off homosexuality. Most people do go for celibacy. It's not a blight that, that God can't deal or help. These casual meetings with ministers might look harmless enough, but they carry a sinister message. How to resist temptation. It's the current face of gay conversion therapy. And it exists because of the ideology fundamentalist churches preach to their congregation, that being gay is wrong. We taught that homosexuality was a product of brokenness. 57-year-old Robert Williams joined a church in his 20s, got married and had two children. But for most of his adult life, he felt he was living a lie. He was gay, but he knew it was a sin in the eyes of the conservative church he attended. I know that by not allowing myself to be fully what I am, that I created depression in myself and anxiety. But at the same time, I knew that if I confessed all that stuff, that there would be big consequences to pay. Eventually, in 2009, Robert confided in his minister at Melbourne's City Life Church and was immediately referred to group counselling. It was gay conversion therapy. And the idea was that at the end of it, Robert would walk out straight and sin-free. They got me to do an elastic band on my wrist. Every time I had a sexual thought, I had to ping it. And if I had sexual thoughts at night, I had to take a cold shower. But after six months, the counselling wasn't working. Instead, it only made everything worse. Because you're a Christian and you can't change your sexuality and you're told that uh, you are uh, destined for hell, uh, because of your sexuality, well, there's no way out, is there? Eventually, the torment became too much, and Robert realised he couldn't continue to live a lie. He made the excruciating decision to tell his wife, his children, and his entire church he was gay. The price he paid for telling the truth was enormous. I lost everything. I lost my children, I lost my wife, I lost my security, you know, I lost my identity. I had to rebuild the whole lot. What's it been like not seeing your children? That's the most painful. That's the most painful thing. Because I love them so much. Sorry. As a year, well practiced. Five years on, Robert is now married to Russell Patty. But he's angry that his religion <laughs> made him believe he was so terribly broken. 
Having gone through it, can you see any merit in gay conversion therapy? None. I submitted myself to it willingly at the time. I didn't know the damage it was going to do to me. Do you think these people espousing these beliefs know they're doing damage? I think they know it's shameful. I think they know the damage it's done to people. I've seen a lot of despair. I've seen a lot of depression. I've seen a lot of harm as a result of our attempts. John Smid knows better than most the devastating effects gay conversion therapy can cause. Come on. Remarkably, for 22 years, it was his job to turn gay young Christians straight. His organisation, Love in Action, was one of the largest Christian gay conversion institutions in the US. Ow! Leave, Damon, leave! John and his group even ended up featuring in the Hollywood movie Boy Erased. Jesus puts us back together. What did you actually practice in these gay conversion therapies? We've clearly taught that homosexuality was caused as a result of family dysfunction, as a result of sexual abuse. We taught that homosexuality was a product of brokenness. Were you qualified to preach same-sex attraction therapy? As Christian leaders, we believe that we had the authority of the Bible. We did not admit or come to grips with how deeply harmful it is when you start working with someone's psyche. Ironically, the problem for John was that while he was outwardly encouraging hundreds of young gay Christians to change their sexuality, privately, he too was battling his own homosexual feelings. I had to just suppress my gay feelings. How did you do that? Through years of cutting off pieces of myself. It was very much like an alcoholic staying away from a bar. Finally, seven years ago, he left the organisation, came out as gay, and eventually married Larry McQueen. As part of his new life, John is now trying to make amends by helping many of the people who went through gay conversion therapy at his institution. I would say every single one that I have had contact with has, has struggled terribly. Um, through the years. With depression, with uh, uh, deep levels of anxiety, um, the people I've talked with uh, had a lot of anger and resentments, uh, and, and there have been people that have even committed suicide as a result of that despair. Every single person that we interviewed had contemplated suicide, and many of them knew people who had taken their lives because of the intensity of the distress that these practices caused. Senior lecturer at Melbourne's La Trobe University, Dr Timothy Jones, agrees that this type of counselling can be extremely damaging. His research into gay conversion therapy, the first of its type in Australia, has uncovered at least 10 church-run organisations still offering this type of counselling. He also found it's now done in a secretive way. The language of the movement, the way it represents itself publicly, has changed quite significantly. Uh, the movement has gone underground and often um, denies that it's attempting to change people's identity. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? Does it say that it's a sin to act on homosexual feelings? It says that it's a sin, yes. It says that it's a sin to act on any sexual desire outside of marriage, um, which is uh, a union of one man, one woman, to the exclusion of all others for life. Uh, that's the standard, and there's no getting around it. And if people don't like the standard, there's no need for them whatsoever to be a part of the church. The managing director of the Australian Christian Lobby, Martin Isles, stands up for the rights of all churches to offer help to gay Christians if they ask for it. You've got to understand that people who would sign up for that are people who want to sign up for it. Because um, they're made to believe that there's something wrong with them. I don't think anybody's made to believe anything. People can choose to believe what they want to believe. These days we live in such a pluralist environment and such a pluralist society. Having 
survived gay conversion therapy more than a decade ago, Robert Williams is now furious that his church made him feel so tormented over his sexuality. What worries him even more is that young people are still subjected to it today. And so now he's on a mission to expose it. Why have you gone undercover to try and seek them out? I feel that they are being dishonest. I want to show that that is harmful and that the damage it does to people. Coming up, we will fight for you. Undercover in gay conversion therapy. It's not God's design for humans. They're hiding something. And why the church says it's OK. Well, it's offered because people want to talk about it. It's offered because Christianity has a clear sexual ethic. That's next on 60 Minutes. Robert Williams is tortured by the damage he experienced going through gay conversion therapy. And he's now intent on exposing what churches would prefer you didn't see. What do you hope to prove by going undercover, by seeking these people out? I want to show people that it's done in a very secretive and covert way these days, and that that is harmful, and that the damage it does to people. Robert spent weeks researching and then making contact with ministers, churches and counsellors known to push the ideology. If you could get back to me soon, I'd be really grateful. Well, it's very hard to get hold of them. Why do you think that is? Well, I'm sh I personally think that they're hiding something. It took time for some to trust an outsider, but others agreed to meet him the very next day. Armed with hidden cameras, he told them of his struggles with same-sex attraction. Do you think it's um, some kind of spirit that's got hold of me, or do you think it's some brokenness somewhere, or what? In this group therapy session held at a church in Brisbane, Robert was immediately told he can be healed only if he remains celibate. If you just would be willing to say, I'm going to just keep myself celibate mm -hmm. until God actually, you know, is able to deal with this fully in me, mm -hmm. so that we will pray for you. Then there were these casual meetings with ministers in cafes and pubs. Each interaction looks harmless, but the message they're giving can still be destructive. You would say, the temptation's not the sin, but acting on that is, it's giving into temptation the sin. Do accept that uh, homosexuality is not God's uh, design for humanity. As he met more ministers and then went through Skype counselling sessions, it became clear to Robert that the therapy had changed. Rather than trying to convert him from gay to straight, they were all insisting that gay Christians remain celibate. So for many of them, it is the pursuit of a flourishing celibate life, not playing it out into same-sex relationships. The gospel's not good news to people who have a gay orientation because the church is kind of saying, you know, you have to be celibate or you can get married, but um, in a heterosexual relationship. That's pretty heavy stuff. Oh, yes. In their terms, you cannot be a Christian and be gay. So they're telling you this in the first meeting you're having with them, but you also feel as though they're being a bit cagey about it. Yes. I certainly think they, they think that they're controversial and that therefore they don't want the publicity, the negative publicity around dealing with gay people. Robert's not alone. With increasing numbers of young gay Christians psychologically affected after going through gay conversion therapy, 
There's now a support group in Melbourne called Brave. Well, you're still shameful, but actually we really, really love you and you're broken and now we're going to try and fix you and here's what Tonight, you're... there are many different stories told. Am I broken because but the ending is always the same. If they can't pray their gay away and turn straight, or at least become celibate, their church ends up shunning them. When I came out, I was told I had to actively step down from those volunteer roles in the wider Christian community. You couldn't be Christian and be involved and be a queer person. But nothing worked. And it came to a choice of, do I commit suicide, which I'm going to go to hell for, or do I be gay, which I'm going to go to hell for? And you're left with nothing. And it's just sad because um, Sorry. Um. Abisard was 20 years old when he was sent by his church to a psychiatrist twice a week for 18 months in the hope he would be converted. And it's done a lot of damage to my life. Tian Edwards was targeted by her church for counselling from the age of just 16. My mum knew nothing about it. Um, as minor, that's quite concerning. I had a lot of shame about it and I was made to, every time we met, confess every thought I'd had about women. They don't actually, they never take responsibility for actually, you know, we created this culture where people were made to feel so ashamed of themselves and we created this culture where young kids in youth groups yeah, exactly. are terrified at the thought of even coming out. But the Australian Christian Lobby's Martin Isles maintains there is no psychological harm caused by churches providing counselling to those who seek it. Look, um, I, I accept that people have been harmed by conversion therapy practices in the past. We found that there are active institutions out there offering it. So again, uh, I differ. I don't consider that to be conversion therapy. I consider it to be voluntary counselling that someone can sign up to. Why is it offered? Well, it's offered because people want to talk about it. It's but, offered but, but because why? Christianity has a clear sexual ethic that says that, you know, one man, one woman, married to the exclusion of all others for life. While conservative churches maintain their right to counsel, the general community is demanding change. Victoria is the first state in Australia to act on the devastating effects gay conversion therapy has on people. Following a report from the Victorian Healthcare Complaints Commission that found the therapy causes severe mental trauma, the government has decided to make it illegal to offer the practice to anyone, young or old. You're actually criminalising a significant part of the Christian faith. Um, that's hugely concerning for the Christian community. These laws would not be introduced if these people weren't experiencing psychological harm as a result of therapy. No, I think that they exist because conversion therapy is a convenient term uh, that can essentially creep into all sorts of areas of life. And if you have laws that prevent that message from being spoken by the church, which has been spoken for millennia, um, you know, it just smacks to me of madness. I think there are things that need to be stopped, but if we're getting into this kind of conversation, um, steady on, it's just attacking religion. What churches are doing is fraudulent because now that we're talking openly about this more so than ever in our history, they are able to hear that it is fraudulent. They're able to, to hear the damages. They're able to see the destruction. And I believe they need to listen. Today, as a former gay conversion therapist, John Smid is ashamed of the damage he caused to hundreds of young people. He's since married partner Larry McQueen and is now on a mission to stop the therapy for good. But he doesn't know if legislation is the answer. I frankly don't see it's really going to stop conversion therapy mm -hmm. because pastors' offices are still going to do it. Churches are not accountable to the law. They can do whatever they want in the name of their religion. If you can't legislate against gay conversion therapy, how do you address it? We need to deal with this at a very base level of what's wrong about calling someone who's homosexual 
uh, sick and broken. Um, we need to change the baseline or else this isn't going to change. Robert Williams hopes his undercover research will help to bring about awareness and change in fundamentalist churches and that ministers will come to realise the long-lasting damage any sort of gay conversion counselling causes. It's pseudoscience, it's psychobabble, it's, it's not real. It does so much damage to you. Um, you'd have to be certifiable <laughs> to submit yourself to it. Um, it's the young people I really feel for. If you need to speak with anyone about issues raised in this story, you can call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Hello, I'm Sarah Arbo. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.